As we know, H2S is heavier than air and can be found in low-lying areas where organic material has been decaying. Anytime you dig a hole in the ground, there is a possibility you could encounter H2S. Before people understood the effects of H2S gas, many were knocked down or even died in the process of digging water wells. This occurred so often that well diggers soon began to draw out empty buckets of evil spirits to exorcise the demons before entering the well. What they were actually doing was withdrawing buckets of H2S gas and dispersing it into the atmosphere, allowing clean air from above to move down into the well. Not an ideal system, but nonetheless one that may have saved a few lives. Oftentimes, if you remove existing air from the space, the decreased pressure can also result in dangerous gases seeping back into the space from below. Therefore, it is preferred to force fresh air into the space, creating a positive pressure and thus reducing the possibility of dangerous gases seeping back into the space from below. This is referred to as pressurization. Today, we have a much better understanding of H2S, its properties and where it can be found. Since H2S is naturally occurring around decaying organic materials, it is often found in petroleum and natural gas reservoirs. It can also be found in many manufacturing plants where organic materials are processed. Some of the more common industries where H2S is likely to be found include oil and gas, pulp and paper, water treatment, food processing, and tar and asphalt manufacturing. The most common locations within those industries to encounter H2S include production refining facilities such as pipes, towers and compressors, pits and ditches, wellheads or bores, vessels, tanks and other confined spaces, fluid spills and tank farm berms, sulfur, amine and sour water units. In industry, products containing H2S are often referred to as sour. Common leak sources at the equipment level include valves, fittings, seals, flanges, drains, pressure safety valves or PSVs, vent lines, and sample test ports. It should be clear from this extensive list that H2S can be found throughout many plant sites and processing facilities. Always err on the side of caution. Although we've come a long way in our understanding of H2S and the dangers it poses, incidents and fatalities still occur. The controls that employers have put in place have drastically reduced the number of fatalities in past decades, but they haven't yet been eliminated altogether. So we must keep doing all we can to eliminate this critical hazard. You must be diligent and protect your own health and safety, and where you can, the safety of others. As we discuss some recent incidents, we'd like you to think about whether you could see yourself making the same mistakes these workers made, and if so, what you can do to ensure you don't suffer the same fate. At 11 a.m. on July 7, 2017, employee number one was attempting to dislodge a 24-inch rubber plug from a two-foot diameter sewer pipe located inside a 24-foot deep wet well. The workers were outside the well, pulling on a one-quarter inch nylon rope that was attached to the 24-inch diameter plug. The plug was lodged inside a T-shaped PVC fitting from the force of the wastewater emptying into the well. Without conducting any atmospheric testing of the workspace, employee number one climbed down the ladder with a crowbar to dislodge the deflated 24-inch diameter rubber plug, which was about eight feet below the top of the well. He had difficulty releasing the plug with the crowbar and started to make his way up the ladder. He lost consciousness when he was about two feet from the top and fell into the 24-foot deep well. Employee number two descended down the ladder to provide emergency rescue, but lost consciousness and went underwater. The wastewater level was about three feet deep at this point. Employee number three climbed down the well to provide emergency rescue, but lost consciousness as well. All three workers died as a result of H2S exposure. In another tragic incident that occurred at 11 a.m. on October 18, 2016, 
Two employees were removing a failed sump pump from a wet well. Both workers again died from hydrogen sulfide exposure. In another incident, at approximately 4.45 p.m. on April 22, 2015, an employee was working at a polymer plant, adding bags of polymer crosslinker chemicals to an asphalt tank. He was on top of a platform for an asphalt mix tank. As he added the chemical, he inhaled a lethal amount of hydrogen sulfide fumes emanating from the tank and died from the exposure. In another incident, at approximately 1 p.m. on October 22, 2014, employee number one was adjusting process piping that had been installed at a wastewater treatment plant when he encountered a leak. Employee number one exited pump room number two to notify water utilities of the leak. Employee number one returned to pump room number two, intending to close the main valve from the primary clarifier to isolate the flow from the leak. Upon re-entering the pump room, he was overcome with hydrogen sulfide and unable to exit the room. Upon hearing that employee number one had fallen, employee number two then entered the room to retrieve employee number one. Both employees were unable to exit the room and were killed from overexposure to hydrogen sulfide. <laughs>